these macro sociologists study. For example, how many of you this morning <coughs> got out of bed, stretched and thought to yourself, oh, you know, there's a crisis in the American family? How many thought, wow, there's growing economic inequality in our society? No, you thought, I gotta go to the bathroom. You know, I got, you know, I look, I'm a sociologist. I take all this stuff very seriously. But you know what I thought about this morning? When I got out of bed, I get to come to school. See, I was brought up in a different generation in which my mommy always told me I was always supposed to tuck my shirt in. But other people these days, and take a look around. Now it's very unusual to find people tucking their shirts in. And so I had this big debate. I said, like, should I tuck my shirt in? Should I not tuck my shirt in? Should I tuck my shirt in? Should I not? What? Okay, and this is their point. We live in these little bits of behavior, not the big ones. We live trying to figure out when she laughed at me, was that a good sign or was she just putting me down? How come you're talking to me? Do you fucking talk? What is he talking about? How is he doing that? It's these kinds of knocking on walls. Hello. Going into bathrooms, this is the stuff of everyday life that these interactions study. So get the entire shift of attention that's going on here. From big stuff, we were talking, we'll come back to this, I swear, we're coming back to this shortly. We'll go back to the crisis of the family or the change in economic inequality. But for the time being, notice these people are studying what we really mostly do with our time. We go to the bathroom, we give directions, we figure out why that baby cried and what the mom should be doing about it from a statement like that. Okay, so let's move on a little bit more. I mentioned the violation of body space. That is, in that urinary flow study, you want to see the impact of physical proximity. This is the study of nonverbal communication. Are we reading people? in terms of their body language, how close they stand to us, how far away they get. We're constantly doing that. Um, one of the interactional sociologists, the name is Harold Garfinkel. Arg, he was the father of a theory of interactional sociology called ethno-methodology. And all this means is we're studying the ethnic behaviors of everyday life. <clears throat> what people really do with their time. He said, you know the best way of studying this is like what happened in this PP study. Breach. Breaching. Breaching is violation of the interactional rules. Because Garfinkel took the accusation of these macro sociologists seriously. You know, the big people are kind of kicking sand in the face of these little macro so micro sociologists. You guys aren't really sociologists, you're all wimpy psychologists. This stuff is so what? Some of, some of these macro sociologists refer to this as the sociology, not of everyday life, but of trivia. Or so what sociology, yeah, these rules, who cares? So Garfinkel took them seriously, he said, okay, okay. I get you think this stuff is really unimportant. But let's see. Let's start off by violating the rules and seeing what happens. Stand closer to somebody at that bathroom. Are you going to start to freak them out? Just stop doing some of these rules of everyday life. Stop giving directions. Stand too close to somebody when they're trying to talk with you. See if they really ignore it. They don't even get it. It's so trivial, you know, no one even notices. And that's Garfinkel's argument. If you violate the rules and nobody notices, this accusation is correct. The accusation of the macro sociologist. But if you violate it and things fall apart, if people get upset, if interaction itself stops or breaks down, is far from trivial, it's important. <clears throat> and one of the exercises I used to do before I started doing the poverty exercise uh, was this kind of violation. I sent you out to violate some rules of interactional sociology and write about what happens. But let's talk a little more about this nonverbal stuff. 
you know, the, it seems so silly, but it is important. Here, let me just show you one of the things here. What is that? Bulldog. Yeah, it looks Sorry. like a bullseye. Now, it actually is the zones of communication. How close you stand to somebody. This is for intimate relations. This is for friends. This is for non-friends when you speak. How close you stand. Can you actually tell people's relationship with each other by how close they're standing when they're talking with each other? Yeah, yeah. Many years ago, I was teaching back at the University of Texas in San Antonio. You know, probably five times the number of students in a lecture hall. Big lecture hall. I didn't know any of the students. And i had done the same lecture, talking about these zones of social contact and this kind of stuff. And as I'm walking out of the classroom, a young woman, which I kind of vaguely recognized from my class, had her arms tucked in, and she was leaning against a young man her similar age. As I walked by, she turned to me and said, Hi, Dr. Robinson, can you tell what our relationship is by our physical proximity? <laughs> <laughs> duh. Big freaking duh. Uh -uh. But notice something about this. This also varies by ethnicity. How close you stand to somebody, whether you make physical contact. In this country, when you meet somebody, you shake their hand. Uh, but. I spent about a year living in Spain, and they do this kissy-kissy routine. You know, you meet somebody for you know, tapas or something like that, and especially you, you, you do this kind of cheek to cheek, and you kind of make a kissing. <laughs> what? If you're Eastern European, is there a lot of hugging? Yeah, a lot more physical contact. Even in this country, we know there's differences in how people uh, re uh, react to this depending on your ethnicity. I'm a born and raised Southern California. I was, I was born in Long Beach, California, the armpit of Los Angeles. And my notion of body distance, when I'm talking to somebody I know, but not well, you know, this, this kind of thing here, is Southern California distance. If I'm talking to somebody I know, but not that well, not even close to that, I'm about like this, Southern California distance. I don't know, but the distance of a boogie board. In graduate school, I had a friend from New York ethnically Italian-American. His notion of body distance from somebody he knew but not that well was much closer. He was in like this. I don't know. Italian-American about a you know, distance of a good-sized piece of pizza. <laughs> and that would make me nervous. So I would step back. And that made him feel like he was shouting. He would step in. And so we did this kind of dopey you know. I'm getting nervous. And I'm starting to give him head fakes, you know? <laughs> He thought I was part rabbit. <laughs> and I thought, dude, back off, you're smothering me. We're constantly reading this stuff, aren't we? You've talked with her like this for six months. You always get close. Now she won't get close anymore. And you think, what? Uh oh. Uh oh. There is a language being written by this kind of stuff physical gestures. How close you lean, the way you look, the way you raise your eyebrows. You ever get that sense something is going on with somebody? It's not what they're saying. It's how they're acting. It's the physical part of that. Yeah. Um, two questions now. Um, for the uh, micro interaction analysis, how do they get so many pages out of something that's so simple? <laughs> uh, years of graduate school. Obsessive interest. The argument is there are hundreds, millions, literally, of these rules to be studied if you simply take them seriously. You sit down, and it's like there's an infinite, and you know you have two mirrors in the back of each other, you glance at the mirror, it's just reflection, and then you realize you keep going back farther and farther and farther. It's kind of this infinite regress. That's what, the minute you start taking a look at these rules, Okay, in a classroom like that, there's going to be one kind of reaction. On a train, on a subway, you might get a different kind of reaction. On a bathroom, where you're sitting next to somebody else in a bathroom stall, and you're knocking on the wall going da 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 you're going to get a third reaction. It's this infinite regress. And that's the way that they can produce a 300-page book on giving directions, 
or why did the baby cry and the mommy picked it up? I, I, I was a graduate student. Uh, I was taking a some class from this guy who <coughs> wrote this paper. We had to read it for our graduate class. Oh my God. Whoa, dude. Now, what's true about this stuff, uh, things like ethnomethodology and some of this, a lot of this interactional sociology developed in the 1960s. And some have referred to this interactional sociology not merely as the sociology of everyday life, which is what they themselves call it, or <coughs> the web sociology or the sociology of trivia. Some have referred to this as the uh, sociology of pot smokers. Whoa, dude. You know that there's this total rule? Whoa, about how you knock on a wall? Did you ever think about that? <laughs> that kind of stuff. And it's not accidental to it. And it's not accidental to it. But there is an element of truth here. They're looking at what real people do and that infinite set of uh, mirrors. That stuff you start to look at and think, oh, wow, there's all this stuff I didn't even think about. And that's what the interaction they're saying. We're all experts in interaction. If we just stop and take a look, we will end up with a huge amount of information, even about something so trivial as the baby cried, the mommy picked it up. OK, let's move on. So we got breaching. We got body distance. Um, we've got, no, not, not right, not talking, eye contact. Because now we're going to do a little experiment. That's why the lights are on. Uh, do you know him? You, you guys know each other? Okay. You know him? No. Good. You're partners. You're a partner with him. You're a partner with her. You're a partner with her over here. Okay. You two guys are partners. You two guys are partners right here. You two guys are partners right here. Okay. Um, while you're a partner with him, you, know, you have a partner, right? Yeah. Okay. You two guys, uh, Michael, you guys are partners. You Tyler, you guys are partners here. You're a partner with her. You're a partner with her. You're a partner back there. You guys partner. You guys partner. Partner, yeah. partner, 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 and you're a priest. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone's got a partner. You may not have a partner. Guess what? Oh, you don't have a partner? Okay, you're in the you're there with her, back over there in the corner. You have a partner? Yeah. Okay. All right, here's what's going to happen. When I say go, ah, yeah. When I say go, you're going to look at them and hold on eye contact for 30 seconds. I don't care what else you do. You can talk, you can simply uh, be quiet, whatever you want to do. You're going to make three contacts, but when I say go, don't start yet. Yeah. yeah, get ready. I don't want you looking away. Do not be looking at, no, do not be looking at me. I, I, are we talking? Are we I say go. You're going to look at them. You can do anything you want, but you can't look away. Get ready. Get set. Go. Keep looking, don't look away. Keep looking. You only have five seconds to go. It's about ready to come to an end. Okay, stop. All right. What do you think? Yeah. What's the most common response to this? 